What is going on there, YouTube? And welcome back to another comic book video. This is the channel where we sit down and cover different comic book videos from different comic book companies. Today, we're going to jump back over to Marvel Comics and continue working on our X-Men Reading Order playlist. Today, we're going to pick up with Giant Size X-Men number one. This is the book that a lot of X-Men fans tell new readers to start off with because this is where we get a lot of iconic characters, but it is also the book that comes before Chris Claremont's run. So if you like today's comic book video, please leave me a like down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read, please let me know in the comments below. You never know, your suggestions could be a future video down the road. But I do hope you enjoy today's video. Now, Giant Size X-Men, of course, was the book that introduced the new X-Men team after the first class X-Men where the first half of the book was more of Charles Xavier going around the world and recruiting the new X-Men team, where the first few pages is him recruiting Kurt Ragnar, AKA Nightcrawler. It is us getting our first appearance of Nightcrawler in the Marvel Universe, where of course he's being chased down by a group of people because of the way he looks. To them, he looks like a demon and he needs to be killed off it does get to the point where Nightcrawler falls off the rooftop and he is grabbed by the crowd. This is where he is saved by Charles Xavier stopping everyone with his telepath powers and handing out an offer to Nightcrawler to join his new X-Men team. This leads into Charles Xavier going over to Canada where he is here to recruit no other than Wolverine. Now Wolverine has appeared in Marvel Comics before this book and it was in Hulk number 181 I think. But with him fighting against the Hulk, it caught the eye of Charles Xavier and led him here to make an offer to Wolverine. Now Wolverine says yes, but at this point Wolverine is part of Alpha Flight the Canadian superhero team, and you have General Chasen telling Wolverine he can't leave, but Wolverine tells him that he can't stop him, and he leaves with Charles Xavier. After Wolverine, he goes to pick up Banshee, and Banshee has been around before this book. He appeared in X-Men number 28, but after Banshee, the story does quickly change over to Storm where we know that she is in Kenya being praised as a goddess because she is using her powers to control the weather to help the crops grow in her area. This leads to Charles Xavier coming to her to tell her that she is not a goddess, that in reality she is a mutant, and he is asking her to join the new X-Men team. We did get a quick panel or two where we see Charles Xavier going to Japan to recruit Sunfire. Again, another character who had been around. He first appeared in X-Men number 64, but he joins the team. Then the story jumps over to Russia, where of course he goes to recruit Colossus. Now the origin of Colossus is not really fully given to us in this book. In reality, we have to go and read other books that fully explain the origin of Colossus on why he joined the X-Men. But anyways, you have Colossus join the new X-Men team. This leads into Charles Xavier recruiting the last character of this new X-Men team, which of course it is Thunderbird. Now this is a character known very well as the character who died very quickly in Marvel Comics because after this book, literally like two issues later, he dies. But here in this book, it is Charles Xavier explaining he needs Thunderbird's help. Where at first, Thunderbird does not want to help him because of the history between Native Americans and white Americans. But after being called a coward, he decides to join the X-Men. This leads back into all of the new characters going back to the X-Mansion, where of course you have everyone wearing their new or old superhero X-Men outfit 
where they are wondering why in the world were they recruited for? And also the big question is, where is the old X-Men team at? This leads into Cyclops walking in and telling them that he will explain everything because they need to save the old X-Men team from a big threat. Now this is a big thing that every X-Men fan knows, which is that in the past, Charles Xavier was using Cerebro and it located a mutant on an island with a power level reading off the chart. So with that happening, you had the old X-Men team go and see if they can recruit this mutant. The old team was Cyclops, Jean Grey, Havoc, Polaris, Iceman and Angel. Well, they go to the island and of course they were taken out left and right. But after being taken out, Cyclops wakes up later and his powers are gone. And so he decides to take the X-Jet back to the mansion to tell Charles Xavier what happened. That something powerful took the X-Men out and of course when he got back to the mansion, his powers returned, but after that, it led into Charles Xavier going around the world to recruit the new X-Men. Now at first, you have Sunfire disagree with the idea of going to help the old X-Men team, but in reality, we know he is going to join, which he does right after the team flew off. Once that is done, you have the X-Men arriving on Krakoa Island. And when they do arrive, you have the X-Men split into multiple groups to go out and scout to see if they can learn more about the island, as well to see if they can find the old X-Men team somewhere. We do see some bickering between the teams because they don't like the partner they have. But once everyone is gone, you have Thunderbird and Cyclops land on the island. But in a matter of seconds, they come to find out the X-Jet is missing and have no idea what happened to it. But after the disappearance of the X-Jet, you have Cyclops and Thunderbird see that a temple has appeared out of nowhere. With that happening, you have Cyclops and Thunderbird go there to see what is up with the temple, which of course they have to fight against some random vines that are moving to kill them, but they are able to make it there. This leads into the same thing for the other teams. For example, Storm and Colossus, they see the temple and they have to fight their way to the temple. This is to show the powers off of the new characters. The next page is Wolverine and Banshee as they fight against giant crabs, which is honestly kind of funny, but they take them down and meet up with the other X-Men teams at the temple. This finally leads into the last team, Sunfire and Nightcrawler, as they are fighting against some giant birds. After the birds, they meet up with the rest of the X-Men. All of those four pages were done to show us what the new X-Men characters can do. This leads into Cyclops and the new X-Men realizing they need to get inside the temple and see if the old X-Men are inside, which of course they do walk in to see the old X-Men tied up in some kind of vines, where of course they do cut the old X-Men down and try to leave the temple, but come to find out that the mutant Cerebro located earlier was actually the island itself. The island is a mutant, or it was, and this will change over time in Marvel, but the island at this point in Marvel Comics is a mutant. This is where Scott Summers learns that the island was feeding off the old X-Men mutant powers, but he was still hungry and sent Cyclops out to bring back more mutants so it can feed off them as well, which is now the new X-Men. But this leads into the old and the new X-Men working together to take down Krakoa, but you have Charles Xavier contact Cyclops and tell him that he has a plan to stop Krakoa. The plan is for Charles Xavier to have a psychic battle with Krakoa itself while the X-Men work together to send the island off into space. 
This is going to lead into a story we are going to cover later on called Deadly Genesis because that book perfectly fits into this one but it takes the combination of most of the X-Men being able to shoot the island into space. This leads into the X-Men team leaving because Krakoa was an island. It is no longer there and so the ocean has to refill that spot which causes a whirlpool. But you have Iceman create an ice boat for them to float on until the X-Jet comes out of the ocean and they are able to fly back home. This is where we are going to end today's video. So please hit that like button down below and also subscribe to the channel for more content to come in the near future. Also, any suggestions on books I should read? Well, please let me know in the comments below because you never know, your suggestion could be a future video down the road. But this is where we are going to end today's video, so I'll see y'all next time. Later.